Hello friends, this video on diversity in living world part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Topics to be covered in this lesson are Introduction Characteristics of life Diversity in life Binomial nomenclature Need for nomenclature Classification Taxonomy Taxonomic categories wherein we'll talk about species, genus, family, order, class, phylum and kingdom. And the last one that is taxonomical aids. So diversity in living world. Again, we are going to talk about the variety of life forms that we see around us. So when I talk about the variety, I'm sure it is needless to explain what are the different varieties of life forms that we see around us. There are so many living organisms which we see around us. When you, If it so happened that you visited a zoo, you would have seen so many different varieties of wild animals which we do not see very often. So some animals which we see around us quite often like cats, dogs, maybe goats, rabbits. But there are some animals like elephants, lions, tigers or camels which you get to see only in the forests or in the wildlife sanctuaries, right? So not only these are the different varieties of life forms, besides that we human beings, we are also a, an important form of life. There are small insects, butterflies, houseflies, mosquitoes, cockroaches, so many worms. You have a vast diversity of life in the water, whether it is the sea or uh, the, a pond or a lake, you have a variety of living organisms living there. For example, the dolphins, sharks, fishes, octopus, so many different types of life. The aerial animals like birds or even the microorganisms like bacteria, fungi, viruses, or if we talk about the green plants which we see around us, the different types of plants, the flowering plants, the trees, shrubs, herbs, grasses, everything fall under the category of plants. So when I talk about life, I mean, when I talk about this subject of biology, I am basically trying to study life. So it is the study of different life forms. So just think, there are so many different varieties of life that exist on this earth. So here, in this first lesson, we are going to introduce that how are we going to study about all the life forms. Because see, the variety, I mean, the number of life forms are huge. So it is not possible to study about each and every life form in detail one by one. Because that will need a lot of time, which is, which is actually not feasible, right? So how are we going to study about them, right? So this being the first lesson of your class 11th, we will see how exactly we, we will give it a shape so that we can study about the different life forms in a very systematic way, right? So with this small introduction, let us quickly see what is living and what is non-living? When I talk about life, when I talk about life forms or living organisms, we should first know what is life. What are the things that actually tell us that something is living and something is non-living? So how do we distinguish between the living and the non-living? Now, a very simple answer that comes out from most of you is, a living thing will will be able to move from one place to another, the non-living thing will not be able to. But movement is not the only thing that defines whether an object is living or non-living. Right? For example, when we are asleep, do we move? Do we dance while we are sleeping? No. Right? So we are not moving. But does that mean that we are non-living? No, we are still leaving. So movement is not the only criteria that can decide whether an organism is living or it is a non-living object. So when this distinction comes to our mind, some of the things when I say non-living, some of the things that comes to our mind is chairs, tables, a guitar, fan, so all the objects, pen, pencil, paper, so everything is non-living. 
but when it comes to living plants animals insects birds human beings microorganisms they are all living so how do you distinguish between these two categories why are you saying that an elephant is living but a guitar is non living because there are many reasons like you may say that the elephant is moving the elephant elephant eats food the elephant can do so many things but the guitar can't do anything it 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 it, it is of no use until and unless somebody plays it or somebody does something on it so it doesn't do anything on its own now do you think that this definition is sufficient to distinguish between a living and a non living no you would have seen a person who faints like sometimes you would have seen that somebody who is not well or somebody who is injured sometimes he becomes unconscious he faints so what about that person that person is still living he is not a not he, he didn't die he is still living but he is not at all moving so everything in his body has stopped for some time but still he is living so what are the things which actually tell us whether an object is living or it is non living so we will talk about that we will see what are the features that actually characterize or that actually defines life when i talk about life biodiversity becomes a very important word what is bio and what is diversity so whenever this word bio comes it means life and diversity means variety so the variety of life forms existing on earth is known as biodiversity <clears throat> now how is biodiversity important why do you think or why do we think that different types of life forms should exist on earth why is it not that okay only if only the cats and uh, the uh, dogs and the rats only if they survive that is good why do we unnecessarily need these microorganisms like bacteria viruses because they cause so many harmful diseases so why do we need them at all on this earth let them not be there so what is the advantage or what is the significance of having so many different types of life forms because they maintain the ecological balance on the earth now what do i mean when i say ecological balance now look at this picture you can see these plants how are different organisms dependent on each other let us have a look at that so here you can see these plants are eaten by the goats because goats feed are herbivorous animals and they feed on plants now these goats in turn are eaten by wolves the wild wolves or jackals they in turn are eaten by lions similarly you have so many other animals like rabbits which feed on grass again other animals feed on them and again those animals are eaten by lions so if you see and when these animals die what happens to them so if there is no microorganism if there are no fungi there if there are no bacteria no decomposers who will decompose the dead and waste things so it will be like a day will come when this entire earth will become a dustbin because it will be full of dead bodies right so these microorganisms also play a role they are the decomposers right so all the different variety of life forms actually help each other they need each other for their survival so that is how biodiversity diversity maintains the ecological balance on earth and that is why we are studying about so many different life forms that is why we encourage a variety of life forms existing on earth preventing species extinctions is one way to preserve biodiversity so now that we know that biodiversity is important we should always try to preserve them right we should always try that more and more variety of life forms should be retained on earth because the more variety of life you have the better it is so how can we do that by preventing species extinctions because now it is we hear right that there are certain species which are about to be extinct for example one example is the dinosaurs so we do not have dinosaurs anymore right they have been extinct so they are already extinct 
there are some other animals which are on the verge of extinction that means they are very few in number so they are already very few in number so people say that we should try to preserve them so how can we preserve them by not killing them because you would have seen that many people have this hobby of hunting so with that what happens is the number of animals keep reducing now when those animals keep reducing too much then they become endangered species and then gradually they reach that um, verge of being extinct right so we should always try to prevent the extinction of species so that we can preserve biodiversity because biodiversity or variety of life forms helps to maintain the ecological balance on earth and that is very very important clear so now you understood why are we studying about this lesson i mean why do we actually need so many variety so that is clear so now we will see now we will gradually get into the living organisms thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors thank you once again